example, where it talks about plan B, he's the one for the stock to flow ratio, it says Bitcoin's gonna enter this big, huge bull run in 2021, which is the exact same thing I've been saying like for the last, since I started this actual channel, I've always said 2021 is gonna be a very big year. That's when it actually has to go. And that just is what, uh, you know, history is uh, repeating itself as far as like the halvings from one, two, and three. And here we are. So this article, I think, is real big. So let's just move down here. And the reason why I want to do this, because I want to make sure that everybody just knows exactly where we were and where we are going. You don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. So when people talk to me, they're like, you know, Rob, I think it's going to be the same thing. It's not. It's not. So this is what Plan B says. This is a uh, little piece snippet that he had uh, talked about in one of the uh, uh, interview. He says, if you look at the trajectory of what we had the last 10 years, where it could go to the level of gold and real estate, then I expect Bitcoin to do another 10x or 20x. Uh, it will go north of 100, another 1,000, 100,000. And that is my prediction. My prediction is by the end of 2021, it'll be around 150,000. Uh, some people say that's super conservative. Some people say that's ridiculous. But I think it's in that sweet spot where I don't think I'm going to be way wrong if I'm down 50 or up 50. It could be 100. It could be 200,000. But I think 150, right around there. But he says it'll be it'll be above 100,000 and maybe even above 300,000 before Christmas of next year. Isn't that crazy to think about? Well, yeah, it's like super crazy. But remember this? It was 12 bucks to a thousand bucks. Do you think that wasn't crazy? That was unbelievable back then. So when he starts talking about this, we're like, that could never happen. It already happened. It happened before, it could happen again. So moving down, there's another piece that he said that was pretty interesting. And this is the thing that always blows my mind about Bitcoin maximalists, because I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. I talk about it a lot, because I think it's gonna do very well in the mid to, to near term. I, I don't know. But I do think, I can't tell what's going to happen in like 20 years. No one can. That's ridiculous. But I think in the very early parts to the midterm, it's going to do very, very well because it's on the, the hearts and minds and, and the, uh, the tips of every tongue. And it's in the public consciousness of what people expect to happen. So the big thing I, I could always, I always question is like, why are Bitcoin maximalists so much of, <laughs> they're so maximalism? I think there's always two reasons. One is because they have a lot of it. It's been around for a long time. And when you own something, you get biased. I get biased when I start to, when I own a bunch of things. I'm like, well, pff, that doesn't make any sense. When I first started this channel, go watch my, my earlier videos. I was so bullish on XRP. I was like, you can't tell me nothing. I But it took a long time for me to go, you know what? There might be a couple of cracks there. Not for sure. And then, of course, here we are. Not that it's not going to do well. I'm just saying, I don't think it's, I didn't, I don't think it's going to be like the number one crypto anytime soon. But this is what, what he says. And this is what I think most of these maximalists thinks. They think this. He says, I think it's a winner take all game. I think that lots of the confusion there comes from the fact that some people see Bitcoin and other coins as products or companies. You can have multiple products and some products will win and the other products will lose or multiple companies can go coexist together. That's very logical. But Bitcoin is not a company. It's a protocol. It's a protocol. And of course, you can only have one protocol, especially a money protocol. In my eyes, it doesn't make sense to have in 2020 and beyond multiple currencies. And that's the big thing. That's why in this channel, I always say cryptocurrencies and digital assets, because when people say cryptocurrencies, they just think of currencies that are on the blockchain. So to me, yes, it only makes sense. You could have like one, maybe two currencies, right? But in all reality, you only need one currency. You only need one world reserve currency. You only need one currency that everybody can interact with and actually use and just, you know, be the, the, the best thing. But that's just it. Like things like, like VeChain and Theta and those types of projects and, and Cardano, they're not currencies. They're all, they are also a protocol and you can build so many things on top of them. They can do such different uh, aspects than Bitcoin can. Bitcoin's not going to track some medication in Sri Lanka across the borders to, to make sure that it, it hits the, the right place and it, it, it goes on the right temperature and all. And, and it's not going to be an oracle. It just it doesn't make any sense. But to maximalism, then that totally makes sense because it's all about cryptocurrency. They don't care so much about digital assets. And that's what was the hardest thing to wrap my head around. But I get it. So the last piece here, and we'll wrap this up. He talks about the risks, and I can see his point here for sure. But again, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to tell you why. So the biggest risk that people see is A, government ban or regulation. Governments have been against Bitcoin openly, 
but also trying to kill the predecessors of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was not the first. It was the fourth or fifth or even the sixth. All the others were shut down. And he says, you can even take a look at uh, Facebook Libra. He goes, so in a way, Bitcoin was designed for this risk. And the reason is because with, with Facebook Libra, you have a place to go to. You can go to California. You can go see Mark Zuckerberg. You can go shut it down. Or, or you can say, instead of just going there, you're like, hey, come to us. Sit in front of all us and tell us exactly what you think. And then we'll shut it down, which is exactly what happened. With Bitcoin, you can't do that. There is This was the smartest thing that Satoshi ever did. He just disappeared. I don't know if he's alive or dead. But I think even if he is alive, he knows he can't come back. He knows that he just cannot materialize now because that will be a single point of failure and you cannot have that. So there is no CEO. There is nobody running the show. It's just a decentralized network of uh, tens, 10,000 plus nodes across the entire globe. And you can't stop that. They can ban exchanges. But guess what? If you ban an exchange in America, well, guess who's going to pick that up? Other countries. Just like, you know what? If you guys want to do it, we'll do it. And we'll run this whole show. So thanks a lot, suckers, for dragging your feet and missing the whole boat because now we know what to do. And the last thing I want to say is this. It's about when he talks about 300,000, it sounds ridiculous, right? It sounds crazy. So I want to bring up the old market cap calculator. So the current price today, so let's put this in. So it's about 19,000, right? About 19,000, right? And its circulating supply is roughly 18 million. 500,000, somewhere around there. And I can just tell you right now, it's not even right. Because uh, in the early, early days, uh, a lot of people threw away their Bitcoin because they didn't really know it was even valuable. They lost things on hard drives. So I would say, if I had to guess, at minimum 2 million, and that's the low number, high, million, high number, probably 6 million. The circulating supply is not 18.5. There's no way, there's not, a ch there's not a snowball's chance in hell that's true. But that's what we're going with. Let's just stick with that. So if that's the case, then the market cap would be 351 billion. So let's take a look real quick at CoinGecko and Bitcoin, 356 billion. Okay, close enough, because we're at 19.2. So if we go back, plan B says we're looking at 300,000. That's pretty crazy, right? 300,000. Circulating supply being the same, you're looking at five and a half trillion. Five and a half trillion. Is that insane? Is that insane? Well, let me remind you, there's the market cap of gold. It's at a whopping 11 trillion. And that to me is worthless. I mean, I own gold, silver, and Bitcoin, and gold is not going away. But 11 trillion, that's kind of high. So if we just get, I don't know, 10%. So we're looking at what? Over a trillion? All right. What about if we grab into some tokenization of stock markets? What if we get into actual currency currency? Well, just the uh, money supply itself is 95 trillion and <laughs> growing rapidly. And then here's debt. Let's say we do something. Again. How about with real estate? 288 trillion. What about, I don't really care about the rest of this stuff. How about derivatives? How about futures, options, and swaps? You're looking at, uh, well, this is the low end, 558 trillion. And the high end, it's over a quadrillion, which I didn't know that number even existed until I saw this uh, little piece here. So uh, if we talk about five and a half trillion, is, is crazy? No, it's not. Just how it is. So. Look, that is it for today. I know it's a lot of information to go over, but I just want to try to calm people down and just make sure they have strong hands. Look, all the institutions are out there. They're waiting for you to sell. They cannot wait. They are dying for you to sell what you have so they can snatch it all up and go, thanks a lot, sucker, and off the, off the way they go. So keep your hands strong. Everything should be okay. Also, as a quick reminder, the 12 Days of Christmas starts tomorrow. So all you got to do is just uh, show up and watch the video, and I'll tell you what to comment. And like tomorrow, we're, gonna, we're giving away uh, four stone books. And then after that, a couple of uh, Nano Ledgers, then a couple bit, a little bit of money, then some swag, and, and all this good stuff. So it's going to be great. All you got to do is just show up, watch the video, I'll tell you what to comment, and then I'll just draw them randomly. Also, SwiftX, the Australian uh, exchange, they're doing the same type of thing, where but they're they had a lot more cooler stuff than me. Uh, like on the 25th, they're giving away at one full Bitcoin. That's crazy, one full Bitcoin. So to get to this, uh, just go to the uh, exchange of wallet fees. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And the one, two, three, the fourth column down. There's a little link right there. It says 12 days of Christmas. Just click on that. And it'll take you right back to what we just saw. So so that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let uh, YouTube do all their magic. And that's all she wrote. So thanks again. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.